Denver Trim Speedway going through tech. About to um, see if this thing's legal. It's day two. We practiced yesterday. Had pretty good practice. We started off we were pretty well off the launch. Tuned it right in though, I think. I think it should be pretty good today. Got to figure out the line qualifying here, but I think uh, I think I'll get it. Three quarters of an inch. 
last time that's why the car didn't work. But she's working tonight pretty good, so track's greasy. Everybody's complaining about it. I guess this track's real finicky. We got big slick cars here. CRA cars. They rubber up the track. Not in a good way for us though. But either way, the car's working pretty good. I'm happy with it. like starting up front but it's all right my gloves are soaking wet from the rain everything is everything is we'll figure out where to start the race if I do happen to get in the lead thank you sir Good luck, buddy thanks um on the restart, you mean? Yeah. If I do, 
end up in the lead at some point. I just don't have no experience here. But um, I'll adapt quick.
and it's taken me a while to clearly figure out how to draw or get back here. I'll go over. Um, it's been tough, man. It's put a lot of pressure on myself and uh, it just feels really good to finally get one. The inversion redraw of the 10 puts you on the pole for the event, but you had to work wow. to do. I think I gotta replace the steering box. That'll be everything in the front end. Uh, I knew Wall was gonna be tough. Uh, I knew we had a lot of drive in this car after qualifying, after the rain and whatnot. The track just got a lot of drive with it. Um, I knew if I could get it pointed at the flag, man, I didn't think he'd, get, he'd be out there still. And then when I seen Robbie got the second, man, he's, he's just always tough. And I knew the restart would be tough. And, uh, you know, he always races me, but I don't know what anybody else will have <laughs> Trevor, congratulations. Savor this one, man. Uh, Good place ever for your Midwest Wildlife to appoint you to hold the Frisky Jr. and won't get another top three finish. I don't want to say you were points racing or anything, but you have no question about it, but this has got to be a good another podium finish with two races left for the Midwest Wildlife Tour Championship. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and have a little close to this year. I knew the first time 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 a third place in the top of the season, your work in all your games in Cato. That's the one that I'm going to be 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 YouTube. YouTube. Oh yeah. Check out my YouTube. Uh, been fighting all year with the car it was first a carburetor at Spartan for multiple weeks I ended up spinning the tires on a restart something I haven't done for one since I've owned this car I haven't done it in years in cars before cars I didn't like I didn't spin the tires but this time I spun the tire the blubber in the carburetor okay so then I spent after that I spent brake problems I couldn't get rid of the brake problems. You know, these are problems that I've let happen. It's they're they're my fault. I control this whole situation. Well, you know what my favorite part about Birch Run was? Well, for one, it was a track that I've only been to once, and I knew I was coming back to the second time, and I and I, I knew it wasn't one of my favorite tracks. It was a track where I wasn't so good at. Um, but my favorite part about Birch Run was that I fixed my brake problem. It was the first race, because I went back to Winchester after the failure of brakes at, at Spartan and, and having to pull off, or Springport. It was actually the failure of brakes at Springport, having to pull off when I was in fourth place at the Hot Shoe 100 with $10,000 on the line. I had to pull off because I was gonna wreck somebody or myself or hurt one of us. You know, I'm not about that. I don't care about the money. 
I do, but I wasn't gonna wreck somebody, so I pulled off, you know? And Birch Run, I had to use the brakes hard quite a bit, and them some bitches worked. The brakes worked. That's my favorite part about Birch Run. I stayed at Travis's that night, and me and Travis, you can say that we, we got down with the devil. We had a good time. We... <laughs> we partied. And that's that's what I needed to do. I stopped at a truck stop on the way from Travis's to Birch Run. And I paid 15 damn dollars for a shower. With no soap. Didn't care. I just needed to be having water run over my head. And you can ask Nestor, you can ask all them guys that see me show up. You can ask my wife when she finally showed up on race day. She got there, the car was not unloaded. I was trying to change tires. I spent from 11.30 in the morning till probably 2.30 at least in the afternoon trying to change my own tires. That's something I do at every track I go to. I change my own tires, but this time, Travis and his old lady, they, let's just say they, they, we, we got, we drank too much. But I got up like a trooper and I went there and I took my shower and I showed up to the racetrack. And I finished third at Birch Run. Not one of my favorite tracks. And, you know, originally I thought, you know, the thing about my fa that that wasn't my favorite about the track was, that there's an opening on the back stretch that I just don't like. But after going to Winchester, I wasn't scared of shit. It didn't matter what the hell I was on. I didn't give a damn. I went out to Birch on that on that practice on Friday and we were putting around. I said, dude, I got in my truck and I sat there for a minute. I said, I'm not even, I can't even be going 60 mile an hour. The opening was not even a concern. I was up against it. I was like, Winchester did a lot for me. Let's just say that. Win Winchester did a lot for me. And you know what else? Get getting to getting to have the Friday practice. The the morning in the shop. Loading the car up by myself, leaving out of here, windows down, stereo cranked. That had a lot to do with it. That was very special. Like there was a lap car incident where a regular that races there all the time drove over my left front and it knocked my steering box out of whack and my steering was stiff after that. Like I couldn't steer the car. Well, I found out now that it, I, it ruined the steering box. So I took the steering box off and it's not a catch in it. It just stiffened the steering box. And I've had a couple of incidences earlier this year, or actually it was last year, that knocked the front end out, but the steering got stiffer. And it's been getting stiffer and stiffer. And I, like Travis said to me, you know, when a steering box goes out or gets hit, it's a catch. It's always been a catch. Well, it's not a catch on this one. I don't understand how it happened or why it happened, but I took the steering box off. The quickener is, goes right through like super easy, all right? I put pressure on the, the, the steering mechanism and the quickener still steers real easy. I'm like, okay, that steering box is junk. So I went out off my son's street stock and I robbed Pete to pay Paul because we're late in the season and I'm trying to I'm trying to juggle shit going on and just the Nova, all that stuff. We raced Dixie, Bertrand, whatever you want to call it, and finished third. We didn't gain a lot of points. We did. We, we were 13 points in the lead when I went to Bertrand, and we are now 16 points in the lead, I think. 15 or 16. That's what this is all about. We're counting points here. So 15 or 16 points, every point matters. And I should know whether it's 15 or 16, but it's Whiskey Wednesday. I'm celebrating because I, I finished good at Birch Run. 
and I'm happy about that. So it's 15 or 16. That's what it is. When we go to Jennerstown though, I'm gonna get qualifying points. And that's a tough thing to do because you gotta be right up there in the top five. Like you actually gotta be, you gotta get the fast time if you really wanna, you really wanna gain qualifying points. So I told my, uh, told my, I think, just told my wife the other night that I wanna qualify fast time at Winchester. And I wanna win that race. And you know what? That's the hardest thing to do in any racing series anywhere. You mark my words on that. That's a fact, Jack. And unless you've raced there in a modified, you have no idea what I'm talking about. And I'll have a shot to that. Winchester's crazy. It's crazy. You have no idea. Well, a lot of, maybe some of you do. But, to do what you gotta do at Winchester, you gotta go there a few times. You gotta race there a few times. And you gotta have balls. And you gotta have no fear. You gotta have a lot of shit to race at Winchester. How you gotta race at Winchester? That shit ain't right when you race at Winchester. You gotta be really willing to li risk your life. Like, racing is a risk your life kind of sport, but Winchester, you're actually doing that shit. You're, you're risking your life. Lap after lap, twice each time you go around once. Twice. I'm not playing. I got a badass car. A good handling car. And I still feel like I'm risking my life twice every time I go around that corner. Like, twice on pure throttle placement. Yep. Anyways, this is about Bertrand. We finished third. We had a good race. We got a good draw. We started outside row two. It was good, everything went great. And that makes me happy. That's, that's a tough gig. You know, you can go there and at Winchester, I drew the worst number I could draw. At Winchester, I drew an eight. That was the worst number you could draw that night. Bertrand, I draw a second to the best number you could draw. That's the second time I've done that this year. That makes me happy. Kalamazoo, I finished second, I drew the worst number you could draw, or second to worst number you could draw. I think it was the worst number you could draw, but I raced that place before. I have experience there. I know how that place works. Not because anybody there told me, because nobody would tell me nothing there. Kalamazoo is the top secretest track you ever did go to. But if you're if you pick it up quick, you learn things. It's how you go fast there. It's a trick. But anyways, I'm gonna wrap this video up about Bertrand. I want to thank you guys for watching my videos. I'm glad you guys do. There is so many people that come up to me and talk to me and interact with me. And I like that. I like to talk to people at the racetrack. And I've got all these koozies, so anybody that comes up and mentions my YouTube at the racetrack, I'm gonna give you a koozie. It ain't much, but it's all I can do. It's it's what I can do. And I, it's my little token of appreciation. So thank you guys for watching my YouTube and subscribing and liking and sending it on down the road. Share it, you know? Thank you guys, I appreciate it. Why well, you look like shit and have no energy? <laughs> hey, I got, in, got into the whiskey last night. Fucking Travis. Yeah, Travis. I'll kick your ass when I see you, Travis.
It's all Travis's fault. Uh -huh.